the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The stone is cast aside and the mantle of darkness is cast away. Be glad and rejoice for God has swallowed up death forever. Welcome. Welcome to worship with West Bloomfield United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you've chosen <coughs> to be part of our worshiping community. Wherever you are, whenever you are participating, we hope this service blesses you and helps you to live as God's child in the world today. I invite you to settle in to this sacred space and time and give this time to God as we open in worship. Sherry will now lead us as we celebrate again the rising of Christ from the dead and the victory over the depths of the grave that God has given and that we still have today. Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, celebrate this day of days. Christ is risen, hush and wonder, see creation is amazed. In the desert, all surrounding, see a spreading tree has grown. Healing leaves of grace abounding, bringing taste of love unknown. Christ is risen, raise your spirits from the caverns of despair. Walk with gladness in the morning, see what love can do and dare. Drink the wine of resurrection, not a servant, but a friend. Jesus is our strong companion, joy and peace shall never end. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were the, where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands at his, and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, I put my finger in the mark of the nails and put his hand aside. I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord I, my, and God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Bless, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. We declare to you what is from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. Thus was 
thus light, this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you that the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us, we declare to you that we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have learned from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for this new day and new promise, for the promise of your life in ours, and for your grace, for your word to guide us. We pray that you would be with us in this time, O oh God, that as we listen to the words of this preacher, that your spirit would come forward in our hearts and in our minds, and that we would hear your voice and know how to follow you this day. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Only two weeks ago, we celebrated Easter, the empty tomb, the victory over death. Jesus rising from the dead to new life. That means that we are in the calendar of the church, at least, in the season of Easter. That's right. We get to keep celebrating Easter. Today we are going to begin to take a look at one of the books in the Bible that helps us learn how to do just that. We're starting today a focus on the book of 1 John. We'll spend the next few weeks taking a look more closely at that book and what it has to say, about, say to us about who Jesus was and what his walking around on the earth and rising from the dead 2,000 years ago has to do with our lives today. Now let me warn you. This is not just for the casual observer, because I'm giving you a job in this over the next few weeks. Your job is to take the time to read the book of 1 John. If you are able to do that between this week and the next time you log in to watch this Sunday service, it would be great. The book is only five chapters long. It's four pages. So it might take you maybe half an hour to get through, and you just might enjoy it, actually. Now take notice, there's also a Gospel of John, and there's also a second and a third letter of John. So I'm not asking you to read those, I'm just asking you to take a look at the first letter of John. Now I don't know about you, but from time to time, I think it would be really nice if I could see God face to face. Talk directly with God and have a clear, articulate voice respond to my questions. I mean, take the guesswork out of what God wants from us and find out what God is really like face to face. When I was in seminary, I remember somebody saying that we should be as much as we could like those first disciples. And when Jesus says, come follow me, we should just get up and follow him. And I remember thinking, well, how are we supposed to do that? How do I follow Jesus that way? I don't have Jesus standing in front of me. It's not like I can stand up and go where he goes the same way I could get up and follow one of you wherever you're going today. I mean, sometimes it's kind of hard to know exactly how to follow Jesus when Jesus can't be seen. You can't hear God's voice, have a conversation or argue like you can with another person standing in front of you. When we have questions, God isn't there to directly answer our questions. When we have needs, God doesn't stop by our house with a casserole and a hug or hand us a check to pay our credit card bills and taxes. I mean, we might recognize God working through a person who does those things, but that's not the same thing as actually being able to speak to him or to hear God speak with our own ears. It makes sense to us. We could follow another human being. How do you follow Jesus, when you can't reach out and touch him. 
How do you believe in something that you can't touch or hear? I mean, I imagine Thomas was struggling with that kind of question when he declared, unless I see the mark of nails in his hands and put my finger in that mark, my hand in his side, I will not believe. The other disciples were trying to tell him about how Jesus was raised for the dead. He just didn't want to be taken in. He didn't want to look like the fool if it turned out not to be true. And when Jesus did show up, well, then Thomas believes, right? Then Thomas is convinced. And what does Jesus say to him? Did you hear? Jesus says, you believe because you have seen me with your own eyes. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. You know, that's actually the whole point of the New Testament, right? A good portion of the New Testament is written so that people who did not see Jesus personally would still come to believe. Look at the verses that follow that. These were originally the very last words of the Gospel of John, and it says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these things are written down, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The whole Gospel of John was written so that we would come to believe in Jesus. And if you go and read the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, it says something similar. It says, since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully for a long time, to write an orderly account for you, so that you may know the truth concerning these things, about which you have been instructed. The Gospel of Luke was also written with that goal in mind, that we would know the truth about Jesus and to believe that he was the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God. But my favorite message about this is the one from 1 John that we heard this morning. It begins literally, that which was from the beginning. And what he's talking about is the biblical beginning of things, right? That which existed before creation, the source of being, God, the eternal mind, the architect behind creation. What existed in the beginning, he writes. We heard it with our own ears. We saw it with our own eyes. We touched it with our own hands. I mean, he's saying we heard it, we saw it, we touched it, we participated in this, and this is what we're telling you. The author of light appeared before our very eyes, and we saw it happen. And now we're telling you about it in the most clear language we can possibly muster, and this is what we witnessed. The infinite, unimaginable, elusive God of life personally took shape right before us. We saw it happen. We heard him speak. And now we are telling you about it so you can experience that right alongside of us, this experience of being in communion with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. In other words, we had an encounter with God, with God's Son, Jesus. It was amazing. And we want that fellowship for you, too. Basically, they're saying we were witnesses to Jesus, who he was and what he did. We saw it, and that's why you can believe us. We saw him. We listened to him. We touched him with our hands, and we're telling you this man, this man was God, God in human form who lived with us. You might not have seen him, but we have, and this is what he's like. The very first words the writer of 1 John uses to describe Jesus, he says, there's no darkness in him at all. He's pure light. The idea, of course, is that we will read the rest of the book 
the entire New Testament, in fact, with that very thing in mind. These are people who actually saw Jesus, talked to him directly, asked all of those questions that we want to ask. So when you sit down and you read 1 John this week, you are reading the words of somebody who actually met Jesus, heard him speak, touched him even. But I want you to be just a little careful at this point. You know, the men and women who wrote these things in the New Testament, they want you to believe that they really did see and hear and touch God in Jesus Christ. They want us to read everything that they wrote with that in mind and trust that what they say is true because they witnessed things that we could never see. But we don't want the fact that they saw him to be the most important point. Their testimony is the assurance that what they say is true. They saw something, or at least knew somebody who saw something, and they want to share that with you. But we don't want to walk away talking about how cool it must have been for them to actually see Jesus. They told us that stuff so that we would believe what they say about him. I mean, I know there's a lot of people who envy Thomas, people who wish they could be the ones to put their fingers on the marks. Our very envy is evidence that Thomas's witness to us is necessary, it's important. We need his eyes and his hands to touch Jesus, but his faith is not the point. The point is our faith, our trust, everything written in the New Testament. Everything is written for our benefit so that we would hear the message and trust it. The whole reason they're telling you that they witnessed it is so that we would believe that what they tell us about God in Jesus is something that we should know for ourselves. Thomas wouldn't believe the witness unless he saw it with his own eyes. He almost missed out because he couldn't believe it based on his friend's word. He wanted something he could grasp with his hands. We would all like to have a God who's a little more accessible, wouldn't we? Tangible, a God that we could directly address and hear directly from. We can't have that. But once, a long time ago, some people did. And here's what they say about it. Jesus wants us to accept that witness and live our lives accordingly. When someone says, follow Jesus, you have to look in here to find out what that really means. Thomas said, unless I touch him, I handle him, I see the evidence, put my hands on it, I won't believe anything, anything else you say to me. First, John says, we saw it, we put our hands on it, we touched it with our very hands, and now we are telling you, the infinite God took shape and stood in our presence. Let us tell you about it. When the church tells you that you should read your Bible, it's not just about being pious and devout. What we're saying to you is that if you really want to know God, you should look at Jesus. And if you want to really look at Jesus, you have to listen to the witnesses. And to do that, you have to go and look at what the witnesses actually say about him. I hope you'll come back next week and join me in diving into what the first letter of John has to say about it, what it has to say about Jesus, about who God truly is. In the meantime, pick up your Bibles and read that book. Join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for those who witnessed the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you for their eyes, their ears, their hands and feet. But most of all, God, thank you for their voices, their words that they have shared, all that they saw and heard with us, so that we could come to know you too and have a reliable testimony about who you are and what you're like. Help us to listen to them and know you for ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender, yes I surrender. please contact us at the church and we'd be happy to contact to connect you with one of our walkers to help support that ministry for supporting issues of hunger both here locally and around the world also don't forget that we sent out a return to worship survey through our email we'd really love to hear from everybody who continues to worship with us or want to worship with us so that we know as we head into the summer what are the best ways for us to continue to lead up lead you in worship finally the sunday school program is looking for teacher substitutes Next Sunday, we will be looking at moving further into the first letter of John, People of Light, a simple test, same time, same place. Sunday School for Kids, of course, is at 9.15 and on Sunday mornings on Zoom, and for our youth at 9.45 on Zoom, everyone is welcome to join us for that as well. Adult studies are also on Zoom on Monday, Monday evenings and Tuesday and Wednesday mornings. Please email the church office for information on how to connect to all of those Zoom meetings or just for information on how to get connected or just to receive prayers from our church. We will continue our time of worship immediately following the YouTube portion of this service on that Zoom account for a time of prayers and fellowship. We hope you'll join us. If you'd like to get connected to any of those things, please email us at church at westbloomfieldumc.org. We'd be so glad to hear from you. God bless. We'll see you on Zoom. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth, come down, fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown, Jesus, thou art all compassion,